Please be seated. And good evening from me. My name is James. I'm the rector here. And uh, just to give a little plug, you might like to tune in to Radio Nine Springs tomorrow morning as you're waking up and opening your stocking. Uh, and I'm there for an hour between eight and nine, I think again later in the evening between seven and eight, uh, just presenting some carols from King's College in Cambridge and uh, with Nat King Cole and even Bob Dylan. So uh, an eclectic mix um, for an hour uh, with me on, on the radio, Radio Nine Springs tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. Well, now let us pray for God's help as we seek to grasp afresh the whole meaning of this Christmas thing which we celebrate year by year. Lord God, we gather as your people. We have come to church because you came to the earth in the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now as the shops have closed and here in church the lights are on and the people gather and we sing your praise, Meet with us, encourage us, stir our hearts afresh with the truth of the Bible's message of Christmas. And may it touch, encourage, and warm our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we all know the date of our birthdays, but I wonder if you know what time of day you were born. I believe I was born around tea time. Uh, my mother is no longer with us, so I can't ask any longer. Uh, my two children were born in Yeovil Hospital just across the way in 2007 and 2008, one at around 7 o'clock in the morning, the other around 4 p.m. Now, this service takes place at a pretty funny time of day, doesn't it? No other service all year long starts in the late hours of the night. Uh, church wedding services are not permitted by law of parliament to take place in the hours of darkness. Weddings have to be public and not done in secret. But this service happens in this late hour of the night because Jesus was born in the night. We don't actually know whether it was December the 25th. We have the Roman Emperor Constantine 350 years later uh, to thank for this date, which he fixed as the celebration of Jesus' birth. Uh, so we can't be sure of the date, but we do know approximately the time of day. It was the middle of the night. And this got me thinking about time. Things that happen in time are counted as historical. And Jesus himself is historical, a real true figure of our world history, who was born and lived at a certain time in a certain geographical place, a real person, a real man, but not like any man. He worked miracles, he taught about God, and heaven and life with an authority that no one else had done before or has done since. Not only that, but he then died and rose from the dead and returned to his father in heaven. This baby of Bethlehem is history. Like Henry VIII or Winston Churchill, and yet unlike any other human being who has ever walked the earth. So what time was it when Jesus was born? First of all, as we heard in our reading, it was the time of Caesar Augustus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. That's how our reading began from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Well, Augustus, Caesar Augustus, he was the great nephew of Julius Caesar, who was the great dictator of the Roman Republic, and chose this guy, Augustus, to be his heir, and that's why he also carries the name Caesar. 
So Augustus then became the first, the first ever, to hold the title of emperor when Rome ceased to be a republic and became the Roman Empire. He was the first Roman emperor. So it's a momentous period of history. And the Roman Empire under Augustus was absolutely enormous. It spread all the way around the Mediterranean Sea, covering Spain, France, Italy, the Balkans, Greece, Turkey, Syria, Israel, where Jesus is born, and then on round the southern part of the Mediterranean, uh, covering North Africa, through what we would call Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. So Augustus really was pretty much king of the whole world, king of their known world. But we don't celebrate his birth, do we? We don't read his teachings. We don't admire his life. And we do not honor his death. Yes, he's part of our history, but the truth is, he really was just like us. But Jesus Christ was not. His life speaks of the power and of the love of God. He could still storms, heal diseases, rise from the dead. He could touch a leper, transform a prostitute, feed a crowd. He could give people dignity, show them love, speak to them of heaven. No wonder this birth is attended by angels. Well, we live today in a time of fragile politics, from Cameron to May to Johnson to Trust to Sunak in quick succession. Trump and Biden, Putin and Xi Jinping, they all play their part, yes, of course. And then they fall to obscurity and then they die. But back in those days, in an outpost of Augustus's empire, in a tiny town, in a cattle shed, comes the birth of one that we not only honor, but worship. Why was this building built? To worship Jesus Christ. And here we are within it now. Now, in the hour of his birth. So it was the time of Caesar Augustus. Second, it was the time for Mary. Luke chapter 2 verse 6 says, the time came. The time came for her baby to be born. Well, what a time for Mary. Away from home, which was Augustus's fault, he'd ordered everyone to go and register in their ancestral town. So Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem, and the town was full of visitors, there were many who traced their ancestry back to the royal line of King David, just as, as Mary and Joseph did. So no rooms were available. All the inns and guest houses were full, only an outhouse of some sort with a cattle feeding trough was available for them. And so it was there and then that the time came for Mary's baby to be born. Nine months previously, she'd seen an angel telling her that this birth was going to happen, that it would come. And she asked, how will this be since I am a virgin? But now, nine months on, by what she knew for sure could only be a miracle of God, she is giving birth. She and Joseph, as a devout couple, would not have had sexual intercourse before getting married. And she knows full well she is a virgin, and yet this baby's inside her. And at that first Christmas moment, he comes to birth. Do you believe God can do that? Can God do that? Bring a baby from a virgin? Or do you believe in a world that just runs itself, 
through some laws of science and some dictates of chance? Or do you, in fact, really believe in God? Do you believe in a God such as the Bible describes? For then you have to believe that the coming of the Savior can be a miracle and that he himself can work miracles just as the historians recount. Born of a virgin, risen from the dead and reigning today in heaven. It was time for Augustus. It was time for Mary. Third, it was time for the angels. It was the time of the angels. There were those shepherds in the field watching their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, angels appear in, in the Bible story in various different ways, but we can be pretty sure they do not look much like the one at the top of your Christmas tree or those on your Christmas cards. The named angels tend to have male names for a start. And there is no indication of flight, actually, in this Christmas account. The shepherds are terrified, and that indicates this is no sweet little angel in a white dress. The word angel literally means a messenger, and that tells us, doesn't it, that what really matters is not the angels themselves, but the message that they bring. And this one immediately speaks and says, I bring you to the shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people today. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Well, that's a fine message, isn't it? A message from heaven to earth by heavenly messengers to shepherds at Christmas. The greatest good news the world has ever heard. And in the midst of war and terror and homelessness and crime, in the midst of sin outside us, in the midst of sin that's in inside every single one of us, God has sent a saviour to rescue us, a messiah to rule over us, and a lord to protect us, a saviour whom we're to trust, a messiah whom we're to obey, a lord whom we are to worship. Yes, the time came for those angels to come from heaven to earth with that message. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. But fourth, fourth and finally, but most of all, most of all, the time came for God himself. Because the birth of Jesus is not just mid-night, but mid-history. This birth stands at the very center of the Bible's story, the very center of God's purposes for the world. God created the world and made it good. Human beings turned from God in rebellion and sinned against him. Well, God chose a single man, Abraham, and promised to him centuries and centuries, millennia even, before Jesus came and promised to Abraham that from his family would come blessing for the whole world. And from that man came the whole Jewish nation, God's chosen people who again disobeyed God, yet God remained true, true to his promise. And so, at the right time, in the fullness of time, at the moment of God's history, Jesus is born. Finally, the Savior, born from the Jews, born to bring God's blessing to the world. And here we are, here we are, 2,023 years later on, 
living in this time when we may truly know him and love him and worship him. For Jesus brings forgiveness, forgiveness for our sins. And he brings that opportunity for each one of us to know God, to know him truly, your creator, your father, your friend. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption and become children of God. So you see, it was the right time, the time of God's planning for his son to come, that we might all be sons and daughters of God. Have you said yes? Have you said yes to God and to his plan? Have you joined that family of God? And do you know him? Do you really know him as your loving Father in heaven? As Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, our Father in heaven, you may truly know him as your heavenly Father. So it was the time for Augustus, the time for Mary, the time for those angels, and the time of God Almighty. And is it time for you? Now, here, in this Christmas night time, now can be the time for you to come running to Jesus like the shepherds, to bow before him like the wise men, to welcome him like Mary and Joseph as your Savior, your Lord, and your God. The angels call it good news, and there is no better news. Come to Christ this Christmas. But not just for Christmas. Give him your whole life. He is worth it. And now, now could be the time. Oh God, our Father, we praise you for the greatness of your love in sending your Son to this world at the set time when the time had come in the fullness of time. O oh Lord, help us too to guard this time of our own lives and to guard this Christmas time to celebrate and feast, rejoice and have fun, but also to pray, to love, to worship and to honour you in our hearts and lives and families and homes, not just for one day a year, to honour you and love you with our lives. We pray it for the sake of your glory. Amen.